Mike Wilson, your words. With the Fed still very much in the picture and earnings estimates likely to fall further, equity markets are almost as unattractive as they were at the beginning of the year. Mike, do you still hold that view? Yeah, we just wrote that one, so I'm uh, definitely in, in that in that camp right now. Um, you know, the old fire and ice narrative is coming back into play, John, because uh, I mean, the Fed's job is incomplete, as Bob laid out, and the Fed knows that. So I think I think the big change this time versus say prior periods when uh, maybe markets got excited about a Fed pivot is this time they're not going to, unless something really bad happens, which of course won't be good for stocks. So I just think that, you know, 15 years of excessive monetary policy uh, has, you know, made the average investor sort of complacent around this, you know, reality. Um, but the second part of our narrative, you know, the ICE portion is really where we think we have a, a more differentiated view. I would say most investors we speak to around the Fed are realistic. Uh, they, they know they're not cutting rates anytime soon. Maybe the bond market's pricing that early next year. I don't know. But that, that hasn't been a great predictor anyways. So most investors, I think, are realistic about the Fed and inflation. That's why multiples went down 30 percent, you know, between uh, January and May. Uh, and, and, and look, what they're not realistic about, I, I believe, is they're not really accounting for the negative operating leverage that we're about to experience. And I say that with confidence because uh, most investors miss the positive operating leverage on the upside. And so it's just a mirror image of that. You know, inflation now is coming through the cost channel faster than it is at the endpoint channel. That doesn't mean inflation is going away at the endpoint. It just means that costs are increasing faster, which means margins are really eroding. We've seen a couple of examples that recently with some of the lower quality retailers where they cut revenues by 100 basis points and then the earnings go down by 30%. You know, that's how it works. And we're just, we're not into that phase yet. That's the next step that probably begins in the third quarter in the fourth quarter of earnings season. Uh, which will, you know, these companies are going to have to admit that the, the negative operating leverage is much worse than what people are modeling today. Mike, how frame this for us then? Just how strong is your conviction that earnings expectations are still too high? Extremely high. I mean, my conviction level is high on that. Um, it, it's similar to my conviction level on the Fed in, in December, which was that people were underestimating where the Fed was going to have to go, and that's why multiples are going to come down. And so our, you know, our focus, as you know, John, we, we talk frequently, you know, really in April is when we pivoted from focusing so much on the Fed and inflation, uh, more to the slowdown that was now upon us. And I think we timed that pretty well. What happened is in June, uh, the consensus started to share that view, uh, particularly on the buy side. And so stocks and bonds priced both, right? We got to rates at three and a half on a 10 year. We got, you know, it's the multiples, you know, really got clobbered. And we got, uh, you know, the buy side and even companies and analysts on the sell side starting to get more realistic about earnings estimate cuts. And we saw that in the data, right? So the earnings revision breadth is one of the worst readings we've ever seen. But remember, that's a breadth measure, which is just number of cuts versus number of hikes uh, in terms of earnings estimates. It, has, it says nothing about the magnitude. And in our experience, it usually takes three to four quarters for the earnings cuts to be finished. And the market typically bottles, bottoms somewhere in the middle of that process. We're in early days on the earnings revisions in terms of the magnitude of the cuts that are coming in our view. So we'd say at a minimum, Forward estimates are probably 5% too high still for next year. And if it's a recession, it's probably more like 15. 